You're watching The Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. It's been over nine months and 250 days since the Memphis Tigers last hit the field. What's followed is an offseason full of change, hard work, and a group with a chip on their shoulder out to prove the doubters wrong. And it's all led to this. The season is upon us, and we're taking you inside the program like never before. It's The Ryan Silverfield Show. Let's go. The game is on. The Ryan Silverfield Show is presented by AutoZone. When you've got car trouble, you want help from number one. So if you've got a battery problem, head to AutoZone, America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Conway Services, the official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent chicken, just the chicken sandwich. RJ Young, technology solutions that power your business. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. Hi, everybody, and welcome into the third year of the Ryan Silverfield era. I'm Dave Woloshin. Jarvis Greer will be my co-host all year long. He's off this week. So let's get to it. What does Coach Silverfield think of 2022? So the hard work and the sweat of fall is over. You got a spring camp in this offseason. How'd it go? Yeah, it was great. You know, obviously nice to have a full spring, right? And then a normal training camp, if there is such a thing, be able to get 15 practices. And it was great. You know, I think we got to see development and improvement of our program, each individual, every single day. I really like where we're at heading into the season. So this is year three for you. This was the job you wanted. It was your dream job. And the first year, it's always adjustments. Second year, you start to hit a stride. I've watched you now at practice and doing all this media stuff. You seem so comfortable now. How different are you in year three? Yeah, you know, I think part of it is just an understanding of what this job entails. College football is ever changing, right? I know we'll talk about that plenty on these shows, but uh, it has changed, right? From year one to year two to year three. But I think just the comfort level, understanding that what we have to deal with on a day to day is going to be ever changing, uh, but really, really appreciative of the opportunity here. And as we continue to grow as a program and myself as a head coach, I feel really comfortable with where we're at. One of the things that won't change is the need for players recruiting. You have now had in your tenure here, the number one recruiting class, the number two recruiting class, the number three recruiting class in this school's history. So you're slowly building this up. Does this pay off this year? I think if you look at our roster, going into the game, the very first game, we're gonna have about 42% of our offensive defense stars will be sophomores and redshirt freshmen. So that kind of says a lot. Kudos to our, our coaching staff and the recruiting department who have done a phenomenal job of putting together this roster. But so many of those guys are young guys. And I think that's where it's gonna to start to see, right? You talk about a 19 year old quarterback maybe even a freshman left tackle, you start to look at all those pieces in play, you say, okay, that's where the recruiting's played dividends. And look, we're grateful. We've got some wonderful, right, fifth year seniors, fourth year seniors that have built a lot of equity into this program, have done it the right way, and they're gonna be the biggest difference makers in this year. But play a lot of those young guys that, you know, you go back to those recruiting classes, right, the top in program history, well, we're doing it the right way, building it the right way as we continue to grow. And I think you gotta sprinkle in the new, the new modern way, right? You gotta go portal. You've lost some, but you've really gained a couple. Let's just go defensive line. The kid from Memphis went to Ohio State. You've got him back. You just got a new kid from uh, Kentucky that you're gonna have for three years. It's, it's gotta be a mix now, doesn't it? Absolutely, right? You can't sit there and just hang your hat and say, we're only gonna live in the transfer portal. I don't think you put all your chips in on that table and say, that's what we're gonna do. I think you're gonna find that right balance. Right? We're not only just going to take high school kids, right? We can go out there and sign 25, but if you lose 10 in the transfer portal, that doesn't mean you go out there and sign 35 high school kids. You're still going to find that balance, right? You're still going to recruit the junior college. So trying to figure out what's the best way to build your roster, not just for short-term success, but for long-term success. And I think we've got that right collection of guys, a handful of transfers, right? The maximum or high school guys that we feel comfortable with bringing in and to continue to develop. And then maybe a guy here or there that can help us grow. Seth Hennigan, I just learned, he's on the Manning watch list. Freshman All-American a year ago. What do you see as his progress right now? What do you see for him at the end of this season? You know, going back to that Manning watch list, he's the only true sophomore on that list of the 30 oh. quarterbacks. So, you know, kudos to him. He, he's done such a phenomenal job. I think you're going to see the biggest growth with any quarterback, right? You talk about a kid that started here 
the University of Memphis at the age of 18. He did some phenomenal things. You said it, a freshman All-American. But so much growth can occur between year one and year two, and he knows it, right? And now what's happened for a guy like Seth, who's so intelligent, the game slows down even further for him, right? He's not out there trying to, okay, memorize the playbook and go like he was in year one. He has a great understanding of our offensive scheme. So now when he goes out there, things naturally process quicker for him. He's got a great rapport with our wide receivers, our tight ends. He has a wonderful understanding of what we want to do. So we're expecting a huge leaps and bounds in his his potential with what he's able to do. Uh, you know, he'll be able to go out there and lead us in all facets. Now he does have a new offensive coordinator. How much will your system under Tim Cramsey change? How hard was that adjustment? Yeah, look, uh, you know, one of the reasons why I hired Coach Cramsey is because he has a full understanding of molding his offense to what we want to do here. And we sat down and we went through it. I said, here's what we're going to do. Here are the things we're going to uh, implore in our offense. And he had a great understanding of saying, okay, and he's done that throughout his career. So we've meshed a little bit of what he has done in his past, not only at Marshall, but all his other stops. He's had a lot of success, but also with what we do here offensively, right? If you look over our past seven years, uh, going into year seven, we've had a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. And so we're going to take it and blend it. And I think it's going to be a unique combination. And Seth's been able to grasp it. And I think it will pay dividends as we move forward. How about the defensive side? Because here's another different coordinator yep. and a different scheme. You go from three down linemen, four linebackers to the opposite way, four down linemen. How big of an adjustment is that? Yeah, look, I think you look at the personnel, what you have. Uh, I think we'll be able to get some depth at the defensive line. And we've had that discussion before. What do you, you do? You know, when I interviewed defense coordinators when I first got the head coaching job, of the seven I interviewed, six of the seven employed a three down defensive front and that's what they, was their bread and butter. This past time when I interviewed seven defense coordinators, six of the seven employed a four down defensive front. So sometimes it's ever changing time, sometimes it's luck and timing. Didn't sit there and say, this is the exact type of scheme we wanted to run and this is what we have to do. But you know, when I met with Coach Barnes, you could sense his passion. Anybody that's been around him understands how much he loves football, how much uh, knowledge he's able to share with our young men. So when we did it, yes, it's a change of scheme, but our guys have bought in really well. Obviously, they had a great spring. There's going to be you know, uh, things that are going to change throughout the season as a defense scheme, right? We're going to probably have an employer different scheme from game one versus Mississippi State versus game two versus Navy. Absolutely. Well, that's a 180. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. We're almost out of time. Before you go into this first game, what's the area you're most confident in? What's the area that might give you a little gray in that new beard? Let me start with the things that are always gonna be concerned. We gotta make sure the kicking game is secure. I think that's one of those things. We obviously had our issues with it last year, and then our turnovers, right? We turned the ball over way too often uh, last year, and we've gotta be able to start fast the right way by owning the football. You know, and then I've got great confidence in this group. Uh, we've got a lot of depth, and uh, I've been, just been pleased with their work ethic, the intelligence of this team, their understanding of the game of football, their camaraderie. You know, this is a true team right here, this 2022 football uh, program that we've been able to put together. And I'm really excited about it, got great confidence in them. And uh, I think we're gonna like what we see on the field. Give me a name or two that I don't know about yet, but I'm gonna know about them by the third or fourth game of the year. Yeah, you know, look, Cremonte Hamilton was a name that you'd mentioned earlier, the yeah. transfer from Ohio State from Whitehaven High School. He's done tremendous things, right? He'll be a starter first on the defensive line. Uh, I think he'll be a, a terror to be reckoned with. And I'm really pleased with him. You know, and then as you look at it, I think one of the things is, you know, everybody says, well, what are you going to do to replace Sean Dykes? Sean was a prolific tight end for us, really never came off the field, was fantastic. Uh, we've got a tight end named Caden Prierscore who's played a little bit here, but, you know, it's going to be our starting tight end. I think we're going to expect a lot of big things from him. All right, there you have it from head coach Ryan Silverfield, but stick with us because we're going to hear from both of his new coordinators and some of the key players on this year's team. That's coming up next. You're watching The Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Welcome back to The Ryan Silverfield Show, where the head coach is the same here in Memphis, but he has two new coordinators this year, including one on the offensive side of the ball. Let's meet Tim Cramsey and figure out what he's going to bring for this team this year. Tim Cramsey, new offense coordinator here at the University of Memphis. Welcome. Just how is this city and the university treated you so far? It's, you know, it's a great place. It's been a good move for my family. So I'm excited about being here. It's been fun and uh, looking forward to a great year. How would you sum up your core offensive philosophy or philosophies? Um, it is a no huddle offense where we dictate the tempo. Um, I personally believe the days of, of playing ultra fast every single day have come and gone. Defenses can, can catch up, but they can play, but we can control the tempo. So we have the ability to 
uh, snap the ball very quickly. We have the ability to align really fast and snap the ball when we are ready to snap the ball. And I think that's what it's come to. What do you think you have in Seth Hannigan? Quarterback who has unbelievable intangibles, a really good skill set who you can see getting better on a daily basis. Lastly, the excitement level for September 3rd in Starkville. Just sum it, it up. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be fun. This is a great time of year for college football. And I'm sure everybody in the country is excited about just watching football and not have to deal with at this point who's transferring where and what, what university is now in a different conference and everything going on with that stuff. So I'm just excited to line up and play football against another team. You know, you go through spring, you go through summer, you go through fall camp, you get sick and tired of going against your own defense. You know, players do, coaches do, everybody, you know. So it's exciting to start preparing for another team, and going out and playing for another team and, and just getting back to playing football which is, uh, you know, college football is the greatest sport there is in the country. All right, now there are some questions about who will fill what role in Cramsey's offense, but there's no doubt who will be under center on September 3rd at Mississippi State. We sit down with sophomore quarterback Seth Hennigan and the man he has to be most in sync with on the offensive line, Memphis native Jacob Likes. Seth, what do you think back to this time last year? When you look in the mirror and see 2022 Seth Hedigan, what is the biggest difference from 2021 Seth Hedigan? I mean, I'd say confidence. Uh, I've gotten my body bigger and stronger, watched more film. Uh, just, I'm a year older, so obviously more experiences in the football field. Um, and then, you know, going against Coach Barnes' defense this spring and then fall camp, I feel like that's helped me a lot too because uh, he does a lot of good things to try and mess up the quarterback and he's a coverage guy and all that type of stuff. So just knowing the game better and then trying to build my body uh, just to withstand hits and be able to run the ball better and try and be the whole package as a quarterback. You walk in last year and you have a surefire NFL receiver in the room and Calvin Austin the third. You might have an NFL guy in that room this year. We don't know, but it doesn't appear at the moment that there's a surefire guy. What is the biggest adjustment for you in that regard? Um, I mean, for me personally, I wouldn't say there's any adjustment. You know, last year we would game plan to get Calvin the ball and get him his touches. Uh, whereas this year we'll just, you know, just game plan for whoever gets the ball. And as the season progresses, you know, one guy may step up and become the guy and then we'll try and get him more touches. Uh, but right now we're just going in with, you know, blank slate, clean slate, everyone on the team. Um, that's one of our mantras, I guess beginning of fall camp, put a blank screen on the board and say, you know, this is what we're owed. We're owed nothing. You know, I may have started last year, but that doesn't matter anymore. You know, it's a new season. Everyone has to earn it again. You said that once you're committed somewhere, you're there. Was there ever really a thought that you would be anywhere else this fall? No, not at all. And I mean, that should continue to happen because I mean, that's just my nature. I guess I would say just once I commit somewhere, I'm not going to you know, there's no reason to flip. And then I like football, so I'm here to play football, try and grow my team, and that's what I'm here for. How would you just sum up the energy and the vibe of this team throughout camp and practice so far? Physical. Like, we, this is probably one of the most physical camps we've been a part of. I mean, like, we're really just ready to get after it. You know, we're, we're upset about how last year went for us, and we're ready, you know, to be back where we're supposed to be, you know, fighting for the championship. New offense coordinator, what has the Tim Cramsey experience been like so far? Love it. Love love Coach Cramsey. Uh, his biggest thing is run. Run. Uh, like we've been talking about, just run off the ball. And his biggest thing is, like, we got to get lined up quickly. we got to go. Um, so it's going to be a pretty exciting offense. I think he's a great play caller, um, great offensive mind. And, uh, you know, we're going to be running this year. We're going to be moving the ball. All right, now let's switch gears to the defensive side of the ball where there's a new coordinator over there as well. Matt Barnes comes from Ohio State and he has big plans for his time here at Memphis. Let's catch up with him. All right, Matt Barnes, new defensive coordinator here at the University of Memphis. Welcome, just how has the city and the program treated you so far? Uh, it high, had high expectations coming in and uh, in both regards has exceeded expectations. Uh, what a wonderful city this is. Uh, what great people live here, salt of the earth, blue collar, uh, some of the best food you know you could ever imagine everywhere. We've got an awesome program here, a, a terrific culture established by our head football coach, Ryan Silverfield. Uh, our kids are outstanding. It's, uh, it's the most fun I've ever had in, in coaching. It's been outstanding. How would you describe your core defensive philosophy or philosophies? We're, we're built on grit. Um, you know, grit means different things to different people. Um, 
You know, for us, it's we'll do whatever it takes. We will do whatever it takes, you know, whether it's a scheme or, you know, personnel decision or whatever, we'll do whatever it takes to win the game. Uh, we want to be pliable. You know, we don't want to be rigid defensively. We want to play, you know, whatever scheme we need to play to win the game. Uh, ultimately, we know that what really matters is our effort, our technique, and the level of execution that we play with. Now, there's no shortage of leadership on the defensive side of this team. We catch up with a few of the prominent players on that side to get their thoughts on how to improve after last season. What is the expectation for that D-line room this year? It's going to be something to see. You got a, young, a lot of young guys in there. You got Kamonte Hampton transfer, so hopefully it had, had like depth to the room. And I feel like, like, like I said, I'm excited for it. I can't wait to see what like the season brings inside of the D-line room. It's going to be pretty good. Fill in the blank for me. This season will be successful for you guys if what? If we just all dial in, like I said, play with play how we supposed to play. Like play with a chip on our shoulder, like you said. Uh, and something we go by in the defensive room is uh, grit. We gotta have grit. I feel like we bring that to every game, open it up from the snap to the finish. I feel like we're gonna run the table. I know with this defense, man, we're going to have a lot of, of things going on. So just trying to be around the ball as much uh, and making plays when, when they come to me is, is one thing I, I want to do. And I know a lot of people are going to be making a lot of plays this year with we have installed for this defense. So I just, I just want to do my job, do it to the best of my ability. And when, when that time comes, just make that play. You know, we've been going at it since spring, so we're ready to see it another school, another jersey color. So uh, it's been physical though. And uh, these guys, they, they been, we've all been putting in the work. Well, the 2022 season begins with an all Mid-South rivalry in Starkville. We sit down with Coach Silverfield to preview Memphis, Mississippi State. That's coming up next. You're watching the Ryan Silverfield Show presented by AutoZone. Let's take a look at the AutoZone road ahead. Game one in hostile territory. We got cowbells. We got Mike Leach's air raid. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we know the challenge is going to be going down there facing an SEC opponent. Game one, uh, Starkville. It's going to be loud. You talked about those cowbells. We're going to have to prepare for that. That noise is going to be crazy. Their fans are going to be fired up. Some are calling it a revenge game. Look, we can focus on what we can focus on. We're excited. We know what Coach Leach has been able to do with his offense. Their defense has got a lot of accolades over the last few years. Our guys will be prepared and ready. Will Rogers is one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. He's a young man that's had a lot of success. He's been really prolific in that air raid offense for Coach Leach. We know he has a great understanding. He's a captain of their team. Uh, we're going to have to find ways to rattle his cage. I know you want to be balanced. I'm looking forward to all this deep running back that you've got. Last year versus them, uh, we were able to run the ball with a little bit of success, but they've done a fantastic job. You look at what they've done with Mississippi State with that defense, with what their defense coordinator has done in their scheme. It's created quite a few challenges, not only to the University of Memphis, but the teams they played uh, throughout the rest of the season. So we're going to have to find a balanced attack, but we're excited about the challenges we'll be facing. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. The first step on this year's journey is Starkville, Mississippi. That means Bulldogs and Cowbells. You're watching The Ryan Silverfield Show, presented by AutoZone. Thanks so much for joining us. One week in the books. Next week, we'll be talking Anchors Away. The Ryan Silverfield Show is presented by AutoZone. Next time you need a car battery, just pick it up. Visit AutoZone.com and select Same Day Store Pickup. Just one reason why AutoZone is America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone, AutoZone. And by Conway Services, official HVAC partner of Tiger Athletics. Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. RJ Young, technology solutions that power your business. Tennessee Lottery, turning dollars into dreams. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.